Hello, Sandy McIver here. Today we're creating with the Alta New Enchanted Iris set and a super easy watercolor technique for the flowers. I'm working with a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor paper and I'm stamping with the VersaFine Onyx Black Ink because it's waterproof and it's allowing me to use my Alta New watercolors. This is a super easy technique, so I hope you'll give it a try and better still, color along with me. I'm just showing you kind of how I'm set up and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to be starting in the top left hand corner with those pink colors using all four of them and then underneath I use the greens and then I pop down and I use a little bit of the turquoise from the third row as well. So for the first part what I'm doing is I uh, added some clean water to the uh, petal and I picked up some of the lightest of the pink and now I'm coming back in with that second one in there to add some shadows around the outside edge and I'm doing that while it's wet so that it will kind of blend together and I'm doing each petal separately. You could probably do two or three at a time if you wanted to. Um, the water does take a little bit to dry so it gives you time to manipulate the ink around a little bit or the paint, sorry. Um, and I'm just doing separate pieces that are not right up against each other because I don't want the paint to run and so none of these are touching and you'll notice as I work on the flower I do that I'll move from the pink and then I'll go up and do the yellow I'll come back and do some green and then I go up and do the stamens and come back and it's because I'm waiting for things to dry so I've got the darker color now so I'm doing the dark portion of the stamen cleaning my brush and then going back with a little bit of really watery white or sorry light pink uh, to just add over top and then I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. So now I'm moving on to the yellow and I'm going to add that into my sections there. And then I'm going to highlight with a tiny little bit of green just on the underside of the stamens as well. While I'm waiting for my flower to dry, I'm coming down and I'm going to do the stem. So I started with the green, then I added a little bit of yellow, and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that turquoise color and just add it as kind of my shadowy highlights. And then I'm going back up, I clean my brush, and I'm going to blend out that light pink that I put up at the top. Uh, it's mostly going to be white, but I wanted to move that pink around a bit. And um, I've noticed things are starting to dry, so I'm adding a little bit of color in a couple of spots. I did the second flower off video just so I could speed it up a little bit and let's move on to the leaves. I started with the yellow section in the center of them because that's kind of where my light source is coming from and then I'm going to add the green at the top and the bottoms and I'm this is all going to stay wet enough. Like I said, you can do three or four things at a time and it will stay damp enough for you to come back and blend them together. And so there's the rest of the green. I'm switching over to that turquoise and moving it up and adding a bit of water to it before I add it. And I just add it to a few spots and I know it looks really messy right now, but don't worry about it. I'm going to come back and I'm going to blend it all in, but I need to get my color down first. That's why I'm doing all four at the same time. And some of it's overlay, but some of it's just to fill in because I don't want a solid color. I want it to be able to kind of gradiate to the next color. And you'll see now I'm going to clean my brush. I go back with a little bit of the really, really watered down yellow and I'm using that to blend. You can also use watered down turquoise to blend and just kind of filling in any white spots that start to show up. And add a little bit more color as you're seeing it start to dry. I think the one on the left is a little bit light so I probably went back and added some more color to that as well. While I'm waiting for my flowers and leaves to dry, I'm going to die cut my watercolor stripes covered dye background. Sometimes these get stuck in the dye, so use something pokey just to get it going. I've got an A2 card base, so that's what, five and a half by eight and a half scored and folded at four and a quarter. And I'm using my Tombow multi-purpose glue on the back of my die cut, and I'm going to be adding it to the front of my card. It's basically the same size as the front of your card, so it should be quite easy to line up. And then I just place my glue on top of it to hold it down. And then you want to die cut all your flowers out. 
and your leaves and now I'm using my gel pen and you notice that I touched it onto my skin I, that's how I kind of get them going in case they've got a little bit of paint or something on them and the secret to gel pens is you want them to be warm that way they run a lot easier and you'll find that you have a lot more results with them you'll see that I have quite a few of them some days for some reason one's cooler than the other or it doesn't want to work and I like to have a whole handful of them so I can uh, get my gel on. So I'm running around and I'm doing the outside edges of all of my flower petals and I'm also doing the center of the stamens and then I do just little highlight lines on the leaves. Pretty quick and easy and this does take a couple of secs to dry so leave it alone for a minute. While it's drying, I white embossed in my sentiment on a piece of black and trimmed it. Attached it to my card with a dimensional, and before that, I had stamped the other sentiment in black just underneath where it was going to go. I have little pieces of foam tape on the back of my flowers and leaves, and one thing I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to see it pop up, is make sure the bottom stems are attached. When I put this card together, I'm not really paying attention to that, and it looks really funny. If you look at the card on the left, it looks like it's coming from one plant because of the way the nice thick leaves are. Not so much on the card I'm putting together, and you'll see that just about now. I think I got sidetracked with those two leaves sticking to my fingers. <laughs> so my colors are pretty vibrant and I got a lot going on in my background so I decided to keep my embellishments quite simple. I am using the Buttons and Galore and More, the Aloha mix and they've got the teal and the pink that I was looking for which is why I chose them and I'm just again using my multi-purpose glue to attach them to my card. So that finishes off the card. One thing I will say is pick your backgrounds first. It will determine the colors that you're going to use. And there is a list of the supplies that I used underneath the video. Just click on the little link. There's also a link to my blog for a free PDF for today's card. And if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that very much. And until next time, toodles.